giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rakakwadash. Once again, it's another video. Shalom to the Lord's elect. Hopefully this video will be edifying to you brothers and your sisters out there of the household of faith. So inspired by the video you see here on screen, I'm going to call my video The Importance of Staying in Tune. The importance of staying in tune. Now, the individual you see here on screen, he goes by the name of uh, Rick Beato. Rick Beato. And um, I looked up his last name, Beato. It's the Italian word for blessed. So, Rick blessed. <laughs> that would be his name, right? Rick blessed. And... When it comes to that music stuff, he definitely is blessed. He's a multi-instrumentalist. He plays piano, uh, guitar, drums. Okay. And he has a great channel. The channel that you see here. His channel has over 4 million subscribers. And he does this series called What, what Made the Song Great. Something like that. Anyway... So I'm watching this video here, his, his latest video, and I believe it's only, what, five minutes, five minutes and 55 seconds long. So he's, he's, uh, he's going into the explanation of when you play a tune, or when you play a song, rather, you have to play it in tune. Okay, if a song is written, let's say in the key of C, or in the key of D, and you're playing it in the key of A, then you are playing the song out of tune. You are out of tune. Now, this knowledge, this truth, is likened unto a song. Let me bring the scripture for you. Okay, this is the book of Revelation 14. Revelation 14 and 3. It says, And they sung, as it were, a new song, before the throne. Okay, the day are the hopeful elect <coughs> that are singing and playing the song. So within the song, you have those that sing and those that play. Okay, like in a band, you have the singer and then you got the rest of the individuals, they play the instruments that accompanies the singer, right? Thus, they play the song. The singer sings the song, the musicians play the instruments that accompanies the song. Right? So it says, <clears throat> excuse me, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, those are the angels. All right, because um, even while we teach this knowledge, this truth here on the planet Earth, uh, we do it before the angels. The angels are present to watch us do it. Okay? Uh, let, let me prove that to you. We have made a spectacle. Let's get that scripture. Uh, spec. As a matter of fact, the angels, there's a scripture where it says the angels encamp around them that fear the Lord and deliver them. Right? That's another scripture we can uh, uh, bring out to make that point. So even while we're teaching this gospel, this truth, this song, if you will, even, even while we're singing the song, we're singing it before the angels. Okay? Like it says back in Revelation. 1 Corinthians 4 and 9. For I think that the Most High have set us forth, or set forth us the apostles last. See that? As it were appointed to death. And the, and the uh, Apostle Paul, he, he um, explained this ministry, uh, the in individuals involved in this ministry. You have your apostles, you have your prophets, you have your teachers. And then he goes down to helps, etc., etc., right? So we're the ones that are singing the song, right? So it says, For I think that the Heavenly Father have set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, because honestly, we could die out there doing the work, okay? For we are made a spectacle, as we're out there teaching, especially when we're out on the street, right? For we are made a spectacle unto the world, see that? And to angels and to men. Now, the, the, the point there is to the angels. So even as we're out there teaching, the angels are there witnessing what we're doing. 
Okay, we just can't see them because they're in another dimension. So now, let's go back to Revelation 14 and 3. And they sung as it were a new song. So every time we teach this knowledge, this truth, we're singing that song. See that? Before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song. So indeed, this knowledge, this truth is a song. No man could learn that song, but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. <laughs> See that? So that's the hopeful elect. So the point is, as we sing this song, we cannot be out of tune when we're singing the song. All right, that's the point. So let's get back to the video now. So now in this video, you're going to hear Mr. Beato talk about the importance of being in tune. You know, having your instruments in tune, you know, when you're doing a song, if you're singing, you, you got to sing in tune. If the song is sung in, in, in the key of B, you can't be singing it in the key of D. If the instruments, if the song, the instruments that are used in the song, if they're playing in a certain key, you can't be playing in another key. Okay, you will not, the listener will not recognize that song. That's the point, all right? So it's the same thing with this knowledge. You can't have these... Uh, other Israelites singing the song and singing it way out, way out of tune, way out of key, messing up the lyrics. <laughs> you know, the person who knows that song, they're going to say, what the hell is this? Okay, <laughs> this is not the song. All right, so without further ado, let's, let's jump into it. There's a lot of things that aren't quite in pitch. So last night, Dylan's practicing his guitar for a concert tonight, and I told him, if anything happens, don't stop playing if you make a mistake or something. So as he's playing, his A string slips out of tune. So I said to my wife, man, you're out of tune, that is? She says, what are you talking about? I said, his guitar is out of tune. She's like, how would I know it's out of tune? I've never heard the song before. I was like, what? Wait, what do you mean? She's like, I've never heard the song. How would I know if it's out of tune? I said, it's, it's out of tune with itself. I don't know what you're talking about. He finished the song. I said, Dylan, bring your guitar down here for a second with your tuner. So he brings the guitar downstairs. I put the headstock tuner on. He's got a left-handed guitar, and I play the low E string. And I show my wife. The thing comes up to the center, and it lights up the green light. I said, that means it's in tune. And then I play the A string, and the red light is to the left, and it's flat. I said, this is, means it's flat. And then I play the string, and I turn it, and then it goes up and hits the green light. And I said, now it's in tune. And I play the power chords, and the guitar's in tune. She's like, I don't, I don't get it. So later last night, I'm FaceTiming with my two sisters. And they said to me, hey, doesn't Dylan have a concert tomorrow night? He's playing guitar. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he practicing for it? Yeah, as a matter of fact, he was just practicing a little while ago. And one of his strings went out of tune. And I said to Nina, oh, my God, hear how out of tune that is? And she says, how would I know? I don't know the song. And they said to me, yeah, how would she know if it's out of tune if she doesn't know the song? I was like, what are you talking about? The guitar is out of tune with itself. I don't know what you mean. They both said this to me. I said, what do you mean you don't know what I mean? So I pick up this guitar and I say, hear this? That sounds good, right? That's a C chord. Okay, what if I do this? Does this sound good? And they're like, oh, that sounds terrible. I said, that sounds terrible because it's out of tune. Something. You get the picture? Okay, let's say that one more time. He gave the example there on the guitar. Okay, it's the same thing with this knowledge, this truth. When, you, when you're teaching it, you got to be in tune. All right, you got to know the lyrics and you got to be in tune. Or else those that know the song will say, look, man, you're way out of tune. You, you're messing up the lyrics. You know, the instruments that you're playing is way out of tune. And that's these other Israelite groups with their crazy uh, uh, doctrines, man. Okay, they're way out of tune. They're not singing the song correctly and the instruments that they're playing is way out of tune. That's the point of this video. Let's hear that one more time. And one of his strings went out of tune, and I said to Nina, oh, my God, hear how out of tune that is? And she says, how would I know? I don't know the song. And they said to me, yeah, how would she know if it's out of tune if she doesn't know? We know the song, right? We know the song, dealing with this knowledge, this truth. We know the song. So anyone who's trying to sing this song, we know when they're out of tune, okay? And it sounds terrible, just like the example Rick Beato used here with the guitar. He played the, the, the chord, and it was the C chord, and then he turned the, the, the uh, tune on his guitar, and he turned it 
uh, he turned it. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? He, he, he turned it the opposite way or he turned it out of tune and then he strummed it and it was way out of tune. Didn't sound good at all. Like he said, it sounded terrible, right? Well, that's these other Israelite groups with their crazy doctrines. And not just them, the, them wacky-tacky Christians too. They're way out of tune because they don't know the song. You know, they're messing up the lyrics and they, the instruments they're playing is way out of tune. Okay? The song is like, what are you talking about? The guitar is out of tune with itself. I don't know what you mean. They both said this to me. I said, what do you mean you don't know what I mean? So I pick up this guitar and I say, you hear this? That sounds good, right? That's a C chord. Yeah, it sounded good, nice and clean, you know? Let's say that one more time. It's like, what are you talking about? The guitar is out of tune with itself. I don't know what you mean. They both said this to me. I said, what do you mean you don't know what I mean? So I pick up this guitar and I say, you hear this? That sounds good, right? That's a C chord. Okay, what if I do this? Does this sound good? And he's like, oh, <laughs> oh, heck no. All right. And you know, um, there's a story of uh, James Brown when he was would rehearse, uh, when he would rehearse with his band, he could pick out individuals as they were doing the rehearsal. He would pick out individuals that were out of tune. Okay, let's say they were doing the song, and he he would know because he wrote the song. Uh, let's say the keyboard player was playing. He he would he, whatever the guy's name was, he would say, uh, "Mr. So and So, you're out of tune there. You're not you're not sounding right." And when the band is playing together, he, he had the, um, that's what made him such a great musician, uh, James Brown. He had the ability to pick around his band who was out of tune. And, and, and sometimes he would find them. Okay, they'd have to pay a fine, all right, because he took his music so serious. Well, it's the same thing with this knowledge, this truth, man, this song. You can't be singing this song or playing it out of tune. That's the whole point of this video. Okay, so with that, see you in the next one. And in conclusion, let us sing and play the song in tune, not out of tune.